guys, I'm Nilo and welcome to another video of mine. So, you're excited about the new ZBrush tool of simulation in MicroMesh, right? Bet you can wait to start using it. But what if I tell you that? Only simulation is not enough. There's a lot of more things that you should think about when you want to create some cool clothes. Don't get me wrong, anatomy is important. I love it, I study it, and you should too. But when was the last time you made a naked guy for a professional job? I know there's a lot of main characters badass in games that plays without a shirt. Or even superheroes wearing colons. But if you think coldly, most of the characters are fully dressed. And no one talks about it. And that's why I'm here to bring you this video with tips and tricks to improve your clothing models. And here goes your first tip. Study your model. Let's have a look at this model, for example. He's fully dressed, except by his arms and face. So, how do you make a model wearing so many overlapping clothes in a way that he doesn't look the same from head to toe? It's simple. Study your model. It is very common nowadays to take a 2D concept and simply transform it into a sculpture. But think with me, if you spend some time before to start to know better your character, where he's going to, where he comes from, who he is, then you have a lot more information that can help you in important decisions like what kind of fabric to use, for example. This is Olaf from the great Ivan Amundsen. And in my imagination, he's kind of Scottish warrior, very rich and very important too. This simple thinking helped me in important decisions like he may have a very good made weapon, or he lives in a cold place, or even his clothes would not be so dirty neither spoiled. Cool, now I have a north to follow in my compass. I'm ready to go to Pinterest and search some reference. Which takes us to the second tip. Try to not be obvious. If you look at the Orlaf's cape, you may see it's thick and heavy fabric. Maybe wool. And you can show it by sculpting the folds down yard because of the weight. This thicky wool also influences the size and repetition of the folds. And it's way different of the other wool piece. Which we'll be needing at the end, with an even trickier edge of braided. Both pieces are wool made, but they have different behaviors. The shirt is made of fine fabric and it is in contact with many other objects, so it makes sense that it is malleable and full of folds. His pants are also made of malleable fabric. And look at this, wrap it in tiny bands. As a medieval warrior, he has a lot of leather and here's a new chance to not be obvious. If you compare the leather of the cape, which is rust because of the fur, it's way different of the chest letter, which is straighted, malleable, and full of folds directed by the seams. Now, if you compare leather with other fabric, you see even more contrast between them. There are countless types of fabric, and each one has a specific shape of fold and trim. Just because you found out something that looks good in one piece, don't mean that you should repeat it in the whole model. Just try different fabric in the same model. Try different shapes in the same fabric. And this stuff don't need to be limited to clothes. You can try variations of seams, carving, wooden, fur, whatever your imagination takes you. If you're able to make that, you'll be able to represent any material in your model only with the sculpture, without any fine detail or color texture. Third tip, tell a story. You're ready to start the most wanted step in modeling, right? You can't wait to add the detail in every single point that you have. Details are important and you can tell a lot of your character with them. Let's have a quick view in Orla's face. He have a couple of scars, don't he? When you see it, you probably think that he had one fight or two in his life. So why don't bring this same tough for the cloth? When you add ripped or blood in a cape, for example, you're telling little stories for every single part of your model. And when you make that, your whole model gets richer. Let's try this in Orlov's cape. When I'm happy enough with the result of the sculpture, I'm ready to add some woven. So the first thing you need at this point, it's a clean mesh. And it's better if it have only one side, an open-end UV. And yeah, here it goes. If you have only one side model and clean mesh, 
our app UV is more than enough to work with. I'll just press this button. The UV is for the surface noise. Go to surface and turn on noise button. What I'll do now is just add some alpha to get an overview of how this works together with the rest of the model. Very simple and very fast. Adjust these parameters here, like strength or size. And voila, the cape is done. <laughs> I'm joking, we're very far from the end yet. Once I'm happy with this alpha, I just leave it here like it is. And here is another good tip for you. I don't apply alpha or micro mesh at this point. If you keep noise turning it on without applying, you have a very nice preview with a very light model. And you should keep like this as much as you can. Now, I will repeat this process in all the other fabrics that should receive woven. After that, I got a very nice preview of how the model will look at the end. I finally finished this step. And I'm ready to subdivide my mesh like hell to add as much detail as I can. So at this point, what I do is another trick. I separate my subtool in a totally empty folder. I now can work in a much higher poly count in a lighter way. Now I will subdivide my mesh three or four times and turn it on again surface noise. Okay. It's a good idea to add a layer, you can have more control. But at this moment, the cape is still a little boring. This is totally obvious detail, and don't tell me any story but manufacturer added blanket. If we have a look at our wool cover reference, we can see some noise that appears even in the new ones, so we need to add them. I will turn off layer and create a new one layer to add damage. This may be not so perfect. Woolen yarn. Or could be a simple imperfection in the time of making it. Now, a new layer for a very strong damage that could happen in a very simple walk in the battlefield. Nice, now we're having some fun. For the end, I will remove some very small pieces of woven. And if you work enough with these directors, you can have a result like this. And that's it bros, hope you have enjoyed yourselves, and até mais galera!